but nevertheless, that's common terminology. So now we're going to focus on the overall mass balance, or the pressure equation, and we're going to implement our finite difference approximations. Okay. We're going to use an implicit method, so we're going to use a central difference in space, uh, or I'm sorry, a, a, we're going to use a forward, differ forward difference in space and an impl uh, implicit forward difference in time, okay? So meaning we're going to evaluate the time of the pressures Again, this is the pressure equation. So we're going to evaluate the time of the pressures at the n plus 1 time step. Okay. So we'll sort of do this just looking at the individual terms. Uh, if we look at this term first. So we're going to go ahead and from the very beginning allow for uh, heterogeneous permeabilities across I and I plus 1. And I've defined it, used this lambda, which is the mobility ratio, which I'll define in a second. So we're allowing for both varying delta x and heterogeneous material properties. This term, it's similar. And finally, we'll look at the time-dependent term. Use a forward difference there. I think I might have been misleading when I said we're going to use a forward difference in space. We're actually, you can think of the, I mean, we're really using the central difference for the second derivative, right? So it's sort of like two forward differ differences. There's this one, 
this one, and then there's the four difference of the derivatives themselves. So it's really the centered, central difference in space on the second derivative, four der difference in time on the first time derivative. And then, like I said, we, we define this mobility ratio. So putting it together, Would everybody be okay if I just did this? Save our hands a little bit. Yeah. So it's the same term, it's just with subscripted water instead of oil. Squeeze that in. Anyway. And then we're almost done. We we'll multiply by Lump some terms.
So now things are starting to look familiar. Such that if we were to write this in matrix form, this. Now, the transmissibility matrix looks a little different, right? It has these entries. Okay. It has these entries. The B matrix is, is essentially the same. The Q matrix is a little bit different. And since we have an implicit method here, Right? We, we've made that decision from the beginning that we're going to solve the pressure equation implicitly. Then, do you have a question? P, yes. Yes. Right there? So because we have an Im implicit method, we know we made the decision we're going to solve the pressure equation implicitly. Uh, we have this implicit e equation here that we would solve. And because we don't have enough time to get all the way through it, um, we'll, we'll do it next time. But what we're going to do next time is we're going to discretize the saturation equation explicitly. And so what we'll do, right, so again, this appears to be all functions of pressure, but there are saturations in the relative permeabilities, okay? But at time t equals zero, we know what the saturation is. I mean, it's the initial reservoir of saturation, right? We talked about how to initialize the reservoir last time. So you plug in those saturations, and you could solve this for one time step, right? Now you know the pressures. And so you can put those pressures into the saturation equation, and you update the saturations explicitly. You know, you don't have to invert a matrix then. You just you update them explicitly. Then you use those new saturations in the pressure equation. Take another step, do it again, do it again. So, so it's implicit pressure, explicit saturation. And we haven't written down the saturation equation. We'll do that next time. But implicit pressure, so implicit pressure, explicit saturation, in PES. That's what we call this, this method. And this is very common in reservoir simulators. This is, this is probably the most common way to solve these equations in PES. It's not without flaws. Uh, we'll talk about some of those next time. But I guess since this is where I ended the class earlier, and I don't have enough time to get through the saturation discretization, so we'll save that for Monday.